So when the Brooklyn Nets made the trade for Ben Simmons last week, I wanted to switch things up and make a breakdown of game footage and show how I think the Nets should utilize Ben Simmons, but then I kind of changed my mind and decided not to. Now we're after looking at some more footage and also hearing Ben Simmons introductory press conference on Tuesday, I've changed my mind and today I want to show you how scary this Nets team could be if they'd use Ben Simmons just like this. What's up guys, SCJ here, and if you enjoyed today's video, then make sure to give it a like as it helps out a lot, and if you're new to the channel and or enjoy the NBA, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. So on Thursday afternoon, I was just going about my day, working on stuff, etc., and I just continued getting the notifications into my phone that the likelihood continued to grow in regards to a Nets and Sixers trade for Simmons and Harden. As a Nets fan from Jersey and someone who's followed the team since they played in Brendan Byrne Arena, I really didn't know how to feel about this trade. As the season's gone on, the likelihood of the Nets finally winning a championship felt less and less likely, but games like the team's blowout win in Chicago against the Bulls, which actually happened to be the Big Three's final game together, still gave me hope. Even with the Nets missing Joe Harris and really getting beaten up by their opponents down in the paint within their opposing bigs, when the Big Three of Harden, Kyrie, and KD were together, they were dominating other teams. So seeing the three guys break up after only 16 games played together killed me last week and it still does kill me today. Those are three of the most gifted offensive weapons in the history of the NBA and just like that the trio is no more. As someone who's covered the Nets for multiple different publications and has also been a fan for over 20 years, it just feels like this Nets franchise is cursed and it doesn't matter if it's injuries, a crazy owner, terrible trades, or a once in a generation or once in a century pandemic, it just seems like there's always going to be roadblocks in this team's way. So with that being said, I'm sure you could probably tell I haven't been thrilled at the idea of this trade, but as the days have passed, I've grown relatively fond of the deal in all honesty. I absolutely loved and still do love James Harden. He's been one of my favorite players since around 2014 or 2015 when Dwight Howard went down and he carried that team throughout the playoffs. But the prospect of Ben Simmons with KD and Kyrie has truly intrigued me as of late in all honesty. Maybe that's just me finally arriving at the final stage in terms of the seven stages of grief. Or maybe the Nets truly do have something good here and I'm starting to realize that. They addressed one of their major flaws and a few of their major flaws in all honesty with one of those being how poorly they've shot the three ball since Joe Harris suffered a gruesome left ankle injury back in November against the Oklahoma City Thunder. And prior to Joe Harris going down with that injury, the Nets led the league in three point percentage and they made the fifth most three pointers per game. But then now the team has the seventh worst three point percentage ever since Joe went down in the middle of November. So adding Seth Curry, who has one of the best three-point shooting percentages all time, is honestly a huge deal and a bigger deal than I kind of realized at first. Then also getting Andre Drummond to lock down the paint is a good move also in my eyes, as long as he doesn't end up trying to be the Andre Drummond from last year with the Lakers, because then yeah, the Nets will be in big trouble. But the Nets have had the sixth worst defense since Joe Harris has gone down, as well as the 12th worst defense overall for the season. So you got to hope that Drummond can clog up the paint for the Nets and be a big that they can really utilize. And seeing how he looked in his first game with the Nets on Monday, it seems like he can really do just that. That was the first game and it was against the Sacramento Kings though. So we will see about that in the next few games and we'll really see if he can be that help that the Nets need down low in the paint. Then finally, let's get into Ben Simmons, who was the real grand prize of this trade for the Nets. Not only will Ben Simmons be able to help out the Nets' poor defense along with Drummond, but using him as the orchestrator of this Nets offense going forward is something that's really important in my opinion. Last year, Kyrie Irving became one of only nine players to shoot 50-40-90 in a season with James Harden running the offense. And now, of course, James Harden is a better point guard or orchestrator than Ben Simmons, at least in my opinion. But the point being, when Kyrie Irving doesn't have to run the offense and could work off ball, he seems to be the most effective version of himself, which is positive for the Nets going forward. With Ben Simmons and Kyrie, or hell, maybe even Kevin Durant with Simmons, this is a play that I would love to see the Nets run from the Sixers Raptors second round series in 2019. Also, working in a play like this is something I'd love to see the Nets do too. And I think the versatility of Simmons to pass and drive is what the Nets truly need to utilize the most. Another thing I think the Nets can do and need to do, honestly, is run Simmons out there with four different shooters. As you can see here, this is from the April 30th game last season against the Atlanta Hawks. And Ben Simmons was really able to get to the rim pretty great when you have four shooters out there that could stretch the floor. 
The Nets could utilize Kyrie, KD, Patty Mills, Seth Curry, or Joe Harris when he returns too, and put those guys next to Ben for plays like this, and it'll open up so much spacing for the Nets and allow Simmons to drive freely to the rim or dish it out to an open shooter if one of the other four defenders converges onto him. Then finally, one Ben Simmons performance I brought up in the past numerous times to friends and family who are Sixers fans was his performance in his playoff debut in 2018 against the Miami Heat. The Sixers were without Joel that night, and I remember watching this game vividly, and Ben Simmons absolutely went off and dominated. And the reason for that, in my opinion, and really just kind of factually beyond my opinion, was they had a slew of shooters out there on the team to put around Ben. The Sixers had Dario Saric, J.J. Redick, Robert Covington, an extremely young Fork and Cork Maz. They picked up Marco Bellinelli and Ersan Ilyasova off, off the uh, buyout market that year. And Ben Simmons dominated with those guys on the floor with him in that series and that game. In that game one against the Heat, he had 17 points, 9 rebounds, and 14 assists in a near 30-point Sixers win. So that's what you got to do with Simmons, and that's simply surround him with great shooters or just solid shooters that'll help stretch the floor. Ben is an elite passer and defender, and that's got to be his role with the Nets. Listen, if he can get his free throw shooting percentage up, that'll be great because that's such a huge thing for the team, especially when he gets fouled a decent amount. And honestly, despite footage of him coming out now where he's knocking down threes pregame for the Nets this past Monday night, I don't even want him to try to improve his percentage from out there, or I don't even need him to do that because the Nets have so much offensive firepower on the rest of their roster that his purpose on this team should truly be to just pass and orchestrate the offense and just play great defense as well. That's honestly all they need from him. So yeah, guys, that's my feelings on how the Nets should use Ben Simmons as well as the breakdown and just kind of the footage showing how he could be utilized the best. And as much as I hated the trade at first, I really am starting to come around on the idea of Simmons playing with KD and Kyrie. And speaking of Kyrie, we got to hope that he can participate in home games by the time the playoffs roll around because we know he isn't going to get the vaccine. So we got to just throw that idea out the window and just hope that newly elected Mayor Eric Adams changes the mandate or gives him some kind of exclusion. The Nets truly have missed guys from last season, such as Landry Shamit and Jeff Green, but getting Curry to fill in Shamit's role once Joe Harris returns is a big deal, and Curry's doing a great job of filling in for Joe Harris, you know, at least out of that first game. And while they won't get anybody that's going to fill in Jeff Green's phenomenal pick and roll ability, as well as the spacing at the four position, you got to just hope that the Nets going small and running KD out there at the four with Simmons and KD's ability to stretch the floor can help the team's terrible issues with spacing that they've had this season. But this Nets team truly seems like they want to play. And on Monday night, they came out with such energy that was really not seen from them the whole season. And guard Bruce Brown looked how he looked last season, which is only a positive thing for the Nets going forward. So while I don't think this Nets team will be able to be a title contending team this season because of the fact that the Nets only got 25 games left, Ben Simmons and KD won't be back until some point after the All-Star break, and Kyrie's only going to be able to participate in nine more games for the team in the regular season as of right now, I do think this trade helps the Nets more so for next season and the long term, especially with the fact that they traded a 32-year-old James Harden for a 25-year-old Ben Simmons, and while Harden is clearly the better player, this Nets team looks like they have a more complete team with and roster as of right now, and we'll see what they can do going forward. So anyway, guys, that's the breakdown on this new Nets team and roster and the Ben Simmons for James Harden trade as well. But I want to know what you guys think about the Nets new roster, any of their other players, or just anything they have to do with the team or what we talked about down below in the comment section. If you made it all the way through to the end of the video, then I appreciate it. And like I said before, if you like this video, then make sure you give it a like because it helps out a lot. And if you're new to the channel and or enjoy the NBA, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell. That way you stay up to date with all the newest content on my channel. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'm SCJ, and I am out. Peace.